Hey everybody, welcome to G-Tech. I hope you're all having a good time in quarantine because I know I'm bored out of my mind, but that's okay because I'm a gamer and gamers like me, we're used to being stuck inside for days on end. You want to get into the PC gaming community, but you've got a very, very tight budget to work with. If you think back to my previous video, I took a Dell Opiplex, smacked a graphics card in there and called it a day. That's actually what I've got right here behind me. Today, I'm actually going to be benchmarking the system to show you just how well this thing performs for 230 bucks is what I spent. So if you haven't seen the first video yet, you can click the card in the top right corner and I'll let you pause the video, go watch that first. You can see kind of what I'm working with and all the specs inside the system. But with that all out of the way, let's get onto the benchmarks. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna test is actually a benchmark. It's Unigen Heaven, and I've got it running at ultra quality, disabled tessellation, all of that good stuff at 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit benchmark real quick and we're gonna see how well this system performs. All right, so this system scored 62.1 FPS at 1080p. That's not bad, and ideally I'm expecting this system to be a really nice 1080p gaming machine, not so much a 1440p machine. I'm gonna go ahead and run this once more at 1440p just to see how well it performs, but I don't think it's gonna be great. Yeah, so looking at our 1440p results, we can definitely see that this system's not meant for that sort of gaming. We were sitting at a very cinematic 32.8 FPS. That is a 30 FPS drop compared to our 1080p results. I didn't change any of the graphics settings. All I did was go from 1080p to 1440p. So I feel like if I ran this test again at like low settings, we could probably get closer to maybe the 50 FPS mark, but I don't wanna push this system too much because I'm not trying to market it as a 1440p gaming machine. So I'm gonna be trying Fire Strike as well as Time Spy. I'm not gonna worry about Fire Strike Extreme and Time Spy Extreme. This system's only running a 1050 Ti. I'm not expecting them to be able to pass those with flying colors. So I'm just gonna be running Fire Strike at stock settings, 1080p. Just from this combined test, I can tell the results aren't gonna be great. GPU's pinned at 100% right now. CPU's sitting around 67. And it's really starting to show its age because this is a third gen i5. So we scored a 6048. We got a 7223 in graphics, 64. 99 in physics and 2604 combined. Yeah, 12.11 FPS. That's not too hot. But for graphics, we were sitting around 30 FPS. Yeah, this system's not going to be crushing any world records or anything like that, but it's it's a budget gaming PC. It's a budget 1080p gaming PC. So next up, I'm going to be running the Time Spy benchmark, which is very similar to Fire Strike. But the big difference is that this runs off of DX12, whereas Fire Strike is DX11. I think it's trying to run this at 2560 by 1440, and it's just cropped in because I have an ultra wide monitor. So once this benchmark ends, I'll go ahead and run the 1080p custom version just so we can see a better frame rate. Now, the unfortunate truth with this benchmark is that if you want to change the resolution or the graphic settings or anything like that, it doesn't count your score. All right, so just like I expected, this didn't run nearly as well as Fire Strike did. We only got a 2341, and that was because we got a 2285 for our graphic score. And then on the CPU test, we only scored 2720 with a 9.14 FPS score. Yeah, this... Ugh, this is this is one of the downsides to using not only budget hardware, but last generation hardware too. So I'm going to be running this system at 1920 by 1080 because like I've said previously, this is a 1080p esports budget gaming machine. For graphics, we scored a 3570 at 1080p and a 2650 on the CPU score. Now for CPU, we actually saw a decrease in performance a little bit. We're at 8.91 FPS, but for graphics, we're seeing much of an improvement. Graphics Test 1 scored 24.26 FPS, and Graphics Test 2 scored 19.76. Player Unknown's Battleground, Classic PUBG. Unfortunately, this game is not too well optimized. It's it's pretty hard to run with this system. Like just skydiving, I'm dipping below 60 FPS and this is at 1080p resolution, low graphics settings. I feel like if you just keep the graphics settings low, like right now I'm sitting at 67, 60, 70, you could probably get pretty consistent frame rates as long as you're not stressing the system too hard and expecting too much out of it. Because the highest I saw just recently was like 80 FPS. You could probably tell there's been a couple hiccups here. 
there. Now this game is completely maxing out my system. It's It's got pretty even distribution across both the GPU and the CPU, whereas games previously have been mostly leaning more towards the graphics card. All right, so the next game on our list is gonna be GTA 5. And I know that this is kind of an older title nowadays. It came out in what, 2013? And the PC version has existed since like 2015 but it still tends to put systems through their pace. So here we've got it running at 1080p. I made sure VSync is off this time. Very high slash high graphic settings. So we're just gonna go ahead and run the benchmark and see how it performs. And already I'm seeing better results than what I saw when I accidentally left VSync on. That was sitting around 60 FPS locked. This is extending outwards into, I saw 90 FPS for a very brief moment there. But it looks like we're sitting a little bit closer to 75 on average, 75 FPS, 73 maybe. Right there, we're seeing upwards of 90 FPS. So I'm thinking that we're gonna sit around the 80 FPS average. For the next game on our list, we're gonna be playing Rocket League. And this is definitely more what this system's gonna be used for. It's sitting at like 200 FPS at 1080p right now. Now, unfortunately, I'm, complete garbage at this game so it's the system's not gonna make you a better gamer it's just gonna give you better performance than probably whoever buys it has been using previously oh my god i just murked a man oh my god he just blew me up and launched my exploded corpse bits into the freaking goal watch this Good lord! What a savage! No, I'm out of boost! Oh god! Why?! Stop freaking blowing me up, you awful, awful man! No! Frick! God! Whatever, I don't like this game. We're sitting in 193, 190, 180, 200 FPS. Yeah, it'll run this game fine. I'm done. The next game I'm going to try is going to be Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I know this is a pretty big esports title. And I've got a couple friends who are really big into this. But I also know that it doesn't take too much to run. Like, you can drop the graphics settings just a little bit and have a really nice pro machine. Setting everything at ultra settings is going to max out our VRAM. We're sitting at 4,054 megs out of 4,018 because we only have a 4 gig 1050 Ti. Dropping that to very high though, we do get under our 4 gig limit, but not by much. So I'm just gonna hit auto detect and we're gonna let it do that. So as you can see, we're sitting at high LOD quality, very high textures, medium shading, high shadows, medium reflections, all that sort of stuff. Already we're seeing some pretty good frame rates. We're sitting around the 95, 80 range. And that's actually not too bad. We are averaging 97.8 FPS. Lowest we got was three, but I think that was just like loading into the benchmark itself. I'm gonna try it at very high because that's under our four gig frame limit. Dang, this game is pretty well optimized. We were averaging at 89 and a half frames per second. So unfortunately that's not hitting our 90 Hertz refresh rate. If you had something like a 75 Hertz monitor, you could definitely be hitting that. If you turn the graphics settings down real low, you could probably get like 120 FPS on like the lowest settings. So I bumped this up to 1440p resolution and I had to drop the graphics down to high very high and anything higher than that was well over our four gigs of vram limit and we're sitting low 50s so i feel like if i drop this down to maybe medium or even low settings you could get a pretty playable 1440p experience yeah 64.4 fps that's actually not too bad so it's above our 60 fps kind of sweet spot that we want to be hitting so just playing with the graphics settings a little bit and you could probably get a good maybe 80 fps all right next game up on our list is going to be doom 2016 i would have loved to do doom eternal but i don't have doom eternal and that's money that i don't have so doom 2016 it's going to be right now i'm running at 1080p i'm running at what was it high yes high graphic settings overall 100 resolution scale to keep it at 1080p and we're running vulcan because vulcan api tends to really help boost your frame rates so we're going to just check and see how well this plays out. I have played this intro scene so many times, let me tell you. Bam, grab his face and smash him in the table. Pick up that pea shooter, blap their face. Blap, blap, is that all? Nope, blap, got him. And then what's her face walks through the door and then looks at the table and says, we have to contain this. We have to contain this. Yeet. Yeah, so right now we're sitting around the mid 80 FPS range. We just hit 112 because that's like a little animated cutscene thingy. And then I run up and I blap him and he dead. Give me this goo orb. 
Thank you. Okay, where's all them dummies? Here's a dummy. Not anymore. Yeah, so right now in this big old gunfight, I'm I'm averaging anywhere between 70 and 80 FPS. 1080p Doom 2016, very capable. All right, so last game I'm gonna test out is gonna be CSGO, and yeah, we already know. It's super, super easy to run. I'm sitting at 140, 135, and you might notice I'm running it 1440p, and of course I'm running it like highest settings, but you know what? Like I said, this is supposed to be a 1080p esports machine. CSGO being now free means it's also pretty well optimized to run on basically any sort of potato you can throw at it. Yeah, like I said, just because you got a decent gaming PC, it's not gonna mean you're gonna get better. Oh god! Yep. See, I just suck. So the verdict on CSGO, yeah, you can definitely play CSGO on this machine with basically no issue whatsoever. Oh god! I blapped him! Oh god! I blapped him again! Oh. So what's the final verdict? Should you go this route or should you just build a budget computer from scratch? For the money that I spent on this system, the parts, the computer itself, and tax, all that sort of stuff, I think it'd be very hard to build a comparable system from scratch. And considering I only spent 230 bucks on this system, I think it's a very competent 1080p, and as we saw, sometimes 1440p gaming machine. If you're playing light titles like CSGO, Rocket League, it's not a bad idea to just buy a 1050 Ti or a 1060, smack it into a $100 pre-built, and be good to go. So honestly, I'm very happy that I was able to get a system that performs this well for so little money. Now at the end of the day, this system's not for me. It's for me to sell to someone who's working on a really tight budget so they can have a nice gaming PC, and for me to make a little bit of a profit on the side. So the only thing left to do is to list this online and wait for a buyer. So. I'll get back to you when that happens. Well, that went well. That's about it. <laughs> wow, that went way faster than I thought it was going to. In less than 12 hours, I had four people already biting on the opportunity. Lowest I said I would go was 375 and he paid in cash. So I'm like, okay, I'll take that. And so literally the next day, after recording all these benchmarks and stuff, it, it, it was gone. So that was a fun adventure. I'm definitely gonna be doing this again. Mostly because I still have the Q300L that I was going to put the Optiplex in that I still need to make the money back from. If I can find some good deals, hey, I'm totally gonna be doing a build in the Q300L and you can expect a video from that. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get sub below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one.